Uh, welcome to a map on a table. Uh, this is uh, a map of the Thames, uh, showing the entire course of the Thames from its head uh, to its tail, uh, to the Thames estuary where it meets the uh, English Channel. Um, what I want to do is just show you where I've got to in my canoeing down the Thames and where I'm going to be going from and to uh, to finish off the journey. Now stretched out in front of you now is uh, the, the the whole map, um, it's a double sided map. Uh, these maps, uh, you can still get them but they're not produced anymore, it's a company called Geo Projects that were doing the maps and uh, it's a really really good map because it gives you all the information you need on the river uh, and sort of local roads and towns near the river along the route. So it's really really good from that point of view and it shows relevant footpaths and things like that. Uh, but it doesn't give you loads of extra information. It gives you lots of um, information about the river, about um, the height of the river, height of bridges, etc., etc. Um, you know, headways of bridges, maximum craft dimensions from different parts of the river. So if you if you're in something other than a, a kayak or a canoe, it's really really helpful. Um, our adventure started. Well, my adventure started years ago at Lechlade um, and it always bugged me that there was a, a, a bit here from Cricklade to Lechlade that I hadn't paddled Now this bit is only navigable by canoe or kayak uh, it's too tight to get a boat much past Lechlade you can get them up to about this point here but um, because when we started uh, this and this is years ago it's about 2005 I started this um, because you technically can only navigate from this point that's where we started uh, so last year with Lee uh, I went from Cricklade to Lechlade and that was a brilliant day if you've got a canoe if you've got a kayak and you want to get out on a bit of wild river and you only live you know if you live around the Thames Valley somewhere from there to there it's one day you might stretch it to two if you are really taking your time but if you want to sort of like push on through it um, that's one day it's about 12 or 13 miles what Lee and I did we started in Cricklade uh, about I think we started about nine o'clock in the morning and we we're at Lechlade at about three in the afternoon um, we had to cut through a couple of trees and things there is a YouTube video on there um, which features that that journey so you'll get a really good idea of that section from Lechlade on the river gets a bit bigger um, but it's this is all sort of through water meadows etc etc very very curvy to the point that as you're as you're going into a curve you uh, can't tell where the river goes as you're coming out of it sort of thing um, but uh, anyway it carries on down Oxford uh, and uh, down to Wallingford there uh, now on the first uh, trip I did this is when I had my kayak which was a Robson Waikiki and um, I would definitely get the Robson Waikiki again I uh, I sold it and I regretted selling it the minute I'd sold it it was one of those because it was a fast touring kayak it was comfortable uh, ideal for a novice like me uh, but we did all of this bit uh, roughly sort of like 16 18 miles a day to Wallingford that was 54 miles at that point this map also incidentally has mile markers on it uh, so these little white dots which you won't be able to see right now but there are little white dots in the stream and that shows you um, how far you've gone so it's nice easy to count up mileage and you flip onto the other side it was some time later that I picked up again in Wallingford so this was when I got Wilma and uh, she was pretty much a puppy at this point uh, I got a friend to drop me in Wallingford and I carried on that journey now at this point I'd sold the Robson Waikiki I was in the canoe um, and I didn't know I didn't I, I had virtually no canoeing experience at all um, but we uh, carried on down Wilma and I and on that first day it was a very long day but we got to there Poplar Island uh, and apple tree yacht now we camped there 
and that was where again this is on youtube video so you can look back through my very early videos um, because this is the time i started making videos um, we camped there overnight and i got uh, buzzed by uh, some idiots in a boat which had come out from caversham um, they obviously hired it for a day or overnight or something and at sort of five o'clock six o'clock in the morning they were whizzing around this island um, which I think it was about six o'clock uh, just because they'd spotted me on there and um, yeah it uh, was just it was rubbish it was horrible um, I got also got visited in the night by a rat uh, that was rifling through the uh, the bag so that disturbed me and Wilma in the night uh, but other than that you know it was good I was really tired at this point from Wallingford to there was a really long way um, and I was surprised at how slow the canoe was in relation to the kayak I remember that uh, I'm sure part of that was due to the fact that um, my technique wasn't very good and uh, probably still isn't but um, anyway since then uh, the next day we got up got back on the river and we carried on and we got as far as Henley on Thames and there was a massive thunderstorm just as we were coming up to Marsh Lock there uh, we're, we'd come out of this Henneton backwater there and uh, the heavens opened the wind was blowing gale but we managed to get back to where I'd uh, left my van parked up um, and uh, sort of got home then I took Bridget out on the canoe uh, we went down Bridget being my new partner and now my wife um, we um, we ended up uh, at the end of the day we got as far as Bourne End now Bourne End is where I used to live uh, years ago and so when I had the Robson Waikiki I'd done all of this Bourne End down as far as Bray Marina I sort of played about on that stretch of water over the years so that's why I don't need to do that bit again so from there uh, Windsor Racecourse to come past uh, Eton where the famous school is of course and Windsor itself past the little castle and everything that's it then we've got um, all this section here Magna Carta Island that's a pretty important um, piece of history for the UK that happened there of course it was the um, anniversary of the Magna Carta last year um, and then we come through um, Staines where the Staines Massif is um, Ali G's old crew uh, so that bit's probably going to be not quite as nice I should think um, but uh, Riverside is generally always fairly pleasant in most places uh, and then we come down south again slide that right up there this is the M3 uh, now I'm actually at this point I'm inside the M25 so there's the M25 around London there's the M3, so you're, you're getting right into the heart of things now. Here, Chertsey Lock. Uh, looks like you can camp there, so I'll look into that. That would be a good stopping point for the overnight. Then we come round, you've got Walton on Thames, uh, Sunbury on Thames, and then I'll oh, slide it over a wee bit more. Just coming into view there in the middle of the screen is Teddington. Now Teddington, uh, Teddington Lock, which is just here, there's actually three different locks there. That's where the Thames goes tidal. So anything after that is uh, tidal water. So that is a much more serious proposition uh, to be that side of the locks. So as an unpowered craft and as a uh, novice uh, canoeist, um, I'm going to be stopping at Teddington Locks and that will be my trip down the Thames completed. So far I've done 109 miles to get to where I've got to um, and I've got another 27 to do so hopefully you'll look forward to that I'm certainly looking forward to it and hopefully um, I'll be able to share it with you.